four-time Miss Olympia Jay Cutler. Welcome to my channel, Jay Cutler TV. And make sure to stay in tune with the newest and updated videos. Subscribe below, guys. Thank you so much for following along. Ashwan, I need a couple uh, pre-interview words from you, man. So we're just about to, uh, just about three weeks out from the Olympia, and I asked you a few weeks ago, as we always do every year, to do a little, you know, Muscle Beach TV interview. But this year, it's for Jay Cutler TV, and this year, Jay says, "You know what, man? I think I want to conduct the interview with Sean." How does that make you feel, man? That he actually wants I to take feel the time? Honored to be uh, interviewed by Mr. Jay Cutler, the one and only. Mr. Uh, Ambassador, <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this, folks. That's really cool, man. Because I mean, I was actually worried this wasn't going to happen because you know we, we talked about this a few weeks ago, but now we're all t minus three weeks. Time's Perfect just timing. flying. Perfect it's crazy. Timing, but um, he really wanted to do this. I'm uh, glad he came in to do the uh, Temple uh, Pendleton, you know, military base yesterday. So he was in Venice today this weekend for the Fit Expo. And so he said, let's do it with Chance. I'm really excited. It's, it's great when you get a chance to just talk to Jay Cutler. So You guys go way back. You have this yeah, history, so I can't wait know. to hear what he's going to say. I have no clue what he's going to say. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be great. great. I'm excited, man. Yeah, man. Thank, you, excited. thank you for showing up already. I appreciate it, man. No Thanks, problem. Thanks, Big Sean. All right, here we are, four-time Miss Olympia with uh, Mr. 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 F yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Flexatron, which I'm going to ask you why the hell that people call you Flex Flexatron, but uh, Sean Roden here, uh, Gold Gym Venice, and uh, yes, we're on the old school mic here because Dave hasn't upgraded to a great mic, but I'm the one behind the camera, to, uh, actually behind, in front of the yeah, in front of the camera doing uh, this interview because this is something we planned for quite a while. I know we, we talked about, I wanted to interview Sean, this time being probably the best time because he's close to Mr. Olympia and... Uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of buzz out here, so this is actually good that we're we're doing this interview. He wanted to do it with me, not with Dave. I see Dave all the time. Yes, he see he <laughs> sees Dave he sees Dave all the time. So, why did you want to do this interview with me? I'm trying to get some of that Jake Cutler. I don't want to say luck, but some of that Jake Cutler presence for this year's Olympia. And what better day, better way to do it than to have the man himself? Listen, I appreciate all the the positivity that you've always talked about with our conversations because I know we had an in-depth conversation many years ago um, in Orlando that was in Orlando right or Europa and it was like crazy time I didn't sleep that night and he came in the water in the restaurant you know looking for food super super early in the morning and I was gonna fly out and we talked about I said Mr. Man do you want to be Mr. Olympia you gotta think like it and act like it whatever and now you know he's he's done everything he's won the Arnold Classics and you know, he's been second at the Mr. Olympia right there. I mean, he's he's done it all. I mean, he's he's right there knocking at the door. I mean, he's been a front runner for many, many years. And uh, it's been elusive, the Olympia. I mean, I've been there. I've done that. This year, it's a little different, man. I, I see some things out there. You're putting out pictures. You know, I always have this thing, like, Sean trains in a snow snowsuit all the time. And this year, he's showing off a little more skin. Tell me what's going on with this. The confidence level has to be pretty high this year. You know what it is, man? It's, it's, I told myself I've been here so many times, you know, with this Olympia prep. And, you know, this time around, I mean, everybody know that you're going to be in shape at the Olympia. It is the uh, Olympia. It's the pinnacle of bodybuilding. This year, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm like, this is me. Here I am. I am going to be my all-time best. I just don't care. <laughs> no, obviously you do care because, I mean, you're, you've been a front runner, bro. People are talking about, like, uh, you know, the guys, they still talk about, you know, there's a lot of guys that potentially could win this show. We know that Phil's going for number eight. This will be the record. And, you know, records are meant to be broken or, or held back. And I was going against Ronnie Coleman when he was going to, you know, break the record and hit nine. And I kept him from, from rewriting history. And uh, That's obviously, the reason why we're here today. <laughs> well, you know what? It's uh, you know, it's I know it's inspiring for the younger generation. Obviously, what I didn't remember, I was just trying to be my absolute best. But why do you think this year um, is any different from any other year? I mean, you're you're at an age now; your body's fully matured. You must be clicking on all cylinders. You missed a huge opportunity earlier in the season. You were a front runner to win, and you probably would have won the Arnold Classic, right? And you know, I'm gonna take it take it a little bit back. Um, so last year for the Olympia, I had a broken jaw um, to begin my prep, and it kind of sucked because I missed out on you know a good chunk of my prep, you know, eating to a straw. And with that being said, I had a you know a great supporting cast that, you know, we all know Chris Acida. Chris was like, hey, send me pictures. 
and he goes, I don't care if you're blending your steak, blending your fish, like just, just send me pictures. And um, we ended up losing 36 pounds before I actually got into my prep. And I was still able to make the top five at the Olympia. Then I start my Arnold prep, end up with a two bleeding ulcer, five blood transfusion. And it pisses me off so bad because, you know, a couple of weeks out, Chris came out and I looked phenomenal. With that being said, I just kind of rolled all that into one and was like, hey, you know what? And I remember texting Chris and said, hey, this Olympia, it's all in. It's like I'm, I'm going for broke. Like whatever it takes to get this one, like I'm all in. I mean, it's all about your health, right? I mean, that that was you probably could have gone to that show and probably completed your prep. You were only, you were only, you only, you were only, you were only two or three weeks out when you made that that choice and announced it that you weren't showing up. So, I mean, I know myself. I've gone through some adversities. You know, I tore my bicep in in 2011, and I still competed because I was right there knocking at the door, and I still finished second. So. Uh, I mean, how hard was that to, to let that go? And is that kind of like, is this like kind of redemption? Like here, I'm, I'm coming to this like full tilt to give you motivation. It was, it, listen, it was very hard. I remember coming out of the hospital and the first day back, I was at home on my treadmill. And I remember sending pic- pictures to Chris and said, we're still in Chris. And Chris is like, as long as you're in, we're in. But I ended up sending an email to Jim Mannion, telling him what was going on. And then he called me and you know, he was like, listen, your health is more important. Don't try to push it. He goes, I know you. You're going to jump back in the gym and, you know, you're going to go all in for this Arnold. I want you to pull back, Sean. Focus on the Olympia. I said, yes, Jim. But then I came to the gym two days later to train and he was here in Venice. And he walked up and he goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, Jim, I've been prepping for this Arnold since November. It's kind of hard for me to now kind of pull back and say we only three weeks out i st- i was in phenomenal shape but you know you listen to the president and you start thinking about other stuff like you know i have a, a I have a daughter i have a family and you know you start thinking about your health and longevity and is it worth it now to try to kill yourself to get ready for that show when you got a little bit more in you to do 2018 mr olympia and so forth so for me this one is complete redemption Okay, but Arnold Classic Olympia, what it, what, which one obviously means more to you? Beating Phil. Okay, so it's a beating Phil Heath. Obviously, you guys have a have a background. You think there's been some? Uh, I know there's been a re- lot of trash talk there. Uh, respect factor, right? Uh, there's occasions you thought you could have won that show, correct? When you were second, uh, twice, 2015, 2016. Um, I remember. I remember looking over and seeing it, looking in his face, both tears, and it was like one of those where you think, I got him. I've seen that with Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you looked over and, you know, I remember Steve Weinberg said, front double bicep, and I looked over and, you know, Phil looked over and it was like, you know, trying to catch his breath, like, okay, you know, let me, and I'm like, okay, I got him, I got him. I keep all that in the back of my mind in a vault, and, you know, those are like my motivation for this year because... Again, you know, you've been there where you stand next to the champion and you're like, you know, I was that close or I got him. And you know what you need to do to get back there and you know how much better you need to be. I've worked on everything that I need to work on for this Olympia. And I'm 100% sure this is not going to be an easy fight. Well, we know you thrive on balance, symmetry, um, definition. You know, let's let's be real. I mean, Phil has the knockout back shot, right? People talk about his back double bicep. I mean, he's not super wide, but... I mean, where can you expose Phil Heath? I mean, in your opinion, I mean, let's let's talk about weak. You know, we talk about his strong points, but where do you think he is the weakest um, that you have an advantage? I mean, I think your width is is superior to a lot of guys because of your shoulders. But where do you think you can really challenge Phil Heath? Um, I mean, maybe you don't want to say because that's kind of like your arsenal. But like, wh- expose Phil Heath a little bit. I mean, he's narrow. I think his front double bicep is crap. His front lat spread look like a crab. I don't think he's ever done a side chest. Um, this is not a side chest in a pose. Um, and abs and thighs. I mean, there are seven other poses besides the rear double bicep. So, yes, he has, you know, probably one of the best back in the history of bodybuilding. That doesn't mean that, you know, if, you know, someone like myself, they're working everything that I need to work on and bring my back up and go blow for blow each pose. At the end of the day, condition, shape, you know, 
size. I mean, this is the biggest I've ever been, 262, three weeks out from the Olympia. And, you know, the hardest I've ever been, so. You know, it really got to me because people just talk about Ronnie's back. Like, oh, Jay, Jay can win other poses. But I was always like this, okay, Sean. Like, back then they compared us. Like, they had the symmetry round and then the muscularity, all that stuff and whatever. But I got so tired of hearing about, oh, the back double bicep. Thank because you. there's so many other fucking poses <laughs> that matter, right? So you stand and you do quarter turns, okay? Shouldn't that count for something? Um, you know, all the front poses, you know, with the, with the shoulder width, because, you know, I was wide as a house. And, you know, the side, you know, I mean, listen, I had great side shots because of my stomach and this and that. Um, you know, it was very frustrating to me. So I can, fe I can feel your pain a little bit. So you think you're going to dominate everything, um, you know, and even stand up against the back to bicep at this point? Back to bicep and back leg spread. Okay, we heard it here first. So, <laughs> you know, you've been training. You've been training. You had a lot of – I've been watching your social media. You put out a lot of great content. Um, you're showing a lot of your training out there. Obviously, the magazines used to expose a lot of us like to show that kind of stuff, and you guys have to now take control of your own destiny with your videos and all your, your training features on, on social media. You're training with Psycho Fitness, Danimal. Seems to be um, you kind of found your niche as far as someone that can push you. I mean, how did this come about? I mean, how, how did you find... I know you used to work with some other trainers. I know you worked with Chris for many years, and he's in the background. I mean, how does he feel about you know you training under under this tutelage and having these training partners and in, in that push you know is there anyone else stepping in and training with you guys besides you too because i noticed that when i got more than two people it was kind of a pain in the ass because the sets became longer is there anyone else that's coming in and working with you guys we have been you know i've always told myself that it doesn't matter what the condition is or what's going on you know what you need to do to get to where you need to be at and i love the fact that there are people that sees us like you know and want to come in, like, you know, we had Chris Bumstead that came in and trained one day. And for me, that was motivation because, you know, I know all of us, all of us are athletes and, you know, we're always trying to pick up something new and you know, try to push each other. So when someone comes in and says, hey, can I jump in for a workout? The pace is a little bit quicker, you know, and the closer it gets to the Olympia, we have an understanding. Like, listen, I don't want to be sitting around waiting, you know. So with that being said, especially working with Chris, Chris says, uh, you know, psycho fitness, he... Listen, he it's a little bit different from, you know, training with Charles back in the past, and I thank Charles for everything that I've learned from him, but, you know, Chris will, like, take you to the top of the mountain and throw you off. I see you doing, like, heavy T-bar rows and shit like that. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, I know, I, yes, <laughs> you know what I was just going to say, because when I, st when I was training against Coleman, and Dave can attest to this and all my training partners, like, I didn't do a lot of that stuff till I saw Ronnie, like, and I'm like, you know, okay, is, this is how you build a back. I'm going to start doing these T-bar rows. I'm watching you load up these plates, man. You're pushing some heavy stuff and getting back to the nitty-gritty. What's up with that? You know, when we look back at picture, even with, you know, Chris Aceto, you know, he was like, hey, you know, Sean, I need you to go back to old school. He goes, Chris like, loves that old school yeah, shit. He was like, I want you to do a heavy T-bar row, you know, just one arm dumbbell row. So I'm like, okay. So, you know, when I broke my jaw and I you know, started working, you know, Chris was driving up to Oxnard to train with me, and you know, that was one of the first things that we talked about. I was like, you know, you know, I don't have a lot of time to get ready for the Olympia. I don't have time to be pretty and, you know, and do all that stuff. We got to do just heavy, basic movement in order for me to just to keep my size. So, you know, we carried it over into the Arnold Prep, and then this year it was the same thing. You know, I wanted to just, I wanted to feel the weight and go, oh, shit, this is heavy. And, you know, doing it and then doing drop set on top of it. And it's been working out real good for me. And I see my body has taken a completely different, denser look, and I'm loving it. <laughs> So yeah, de de definitely the hard weights. I mean, that I I was a lot of uh, an advocate of lifting heavy weights and you know staying away from a lot of machines. You guys do a lot of different training out here. You know, have a lot of different equipment than I actually had. But you know, you you chose Gold's Gym Venice. It's as far away from your actual home, um, and that's it, that must be tough. Um, you know, I know you have a wife and a child that you're super close to, but like, how do you dedicate yourself to coming and training at Gold's Gym Venice? I mean, how does that really, does it really benefit you that much than to be able to train closer to home? Um, there's a reason why I wanted to train here at Gold's. Um, you know, when I originally moved out here in 2013, I wanted to be in the same atmosphere as, you know, the Flex Wheeler, the Chris Camere, the Dennis James, the Paul Dill Your idols. You know, all the, guy, all the guys that, you know, trained here, at the Mecca, and, you know, you had to look in the magazine to see what they were doing. You know, I wanted to look in the wall and realize, you know, I have an understanding of why I'm here. And um, 
that's my wife kind of like it when I leave the house. You know, when I go to train back home, I'm back home sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> just like, you already train? I'm like, yeah. You know, so now that, you know, I get up in the morning, 4 o'clock, I do my cardio, jump in the car, drive down here to Venice, you know, two and a half hours to train with these guys and, you know, grab a meal. That long? Yeah. You know, it's. How tough. do you stay awake? Motivated. <laughs> I, well, I know you like to sleep a lot. Every, there's a lot of there's a lot of videos out there. You sleep and everywhere you go. What's up with that? I pulled over plenty of times just to take a nap on the way back home. But I've been so motivated coming here, um, knowing what at stake, and you know that's the Olympia. And you know when you have a great group of guys that's pushing you consistently every day. You know, one you don't want to disappoint them, and two, you know, you know what? I can't slack off while I'm here because. I'm driving back and forth, and it's a long freaking drive. So, you know, but I just love being in the atmosphere of knowing that I am at Gold's Gym. I am at the Mecca, and, you know, this is bodybuilding. Well, listen, we're excited to see you at the Olympian. Hopefully, um, I'm going to come to the press conference because I'm looking to hopefully you're going to say something. Uh, I'm not holding back. You know, okay, so he's not holding back this year. We're, we're excited for this press conference, this Olympia, because we do need some hype. Uh, I mean, I, I know you guys are putting out a lot of great stuff, and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, – you know, we can see a great battle up on stage. And, uh, the thing is, I am, you know, congratulations to Mr. Olympia for what he has done, but I don't think he has done anything for the sport of bodybuilding, personally. For someone that has won that many titles, what, is, like, what have you done for bodybuilding? I look at, you know, someone like yourself who is retired, and I'm like, wow, Jay's at the Army base. Wow, he's not even competing. <laughs> I was like, but, you know, to see, you know, four time Mr. Olympia retired and still out there on the daily, daily, daily grind. And then the current Mr. Olympia that doesn't travel. That doesn't benefit her sport at all. And if you're seven time Mr. Olympia, this should be a whole lot of shit that you have done with those seven titles to bring, you know, more attention to the bodybuilding, more notoriety to the bodybuilding. Besides just saying that they got seven titles. And I think it's time for a change. Well, I think, you know, we all get to that point when, uh, you know, when Ronnie was winning, you know, going for number nine, it was like I thought about these things daily. Like, okay, what can I do better if I ever win the title? So, you know, we're really looking forward to Vegas. I mean, there's a lot of contenders at the show. Um, anyone else you want to thank? I, I know I mentioned a lot of your team. Um, but, you know, is there anything else you want to add to uh, – there's, there's, no, there's no scoop. There's, there's no secrets. I mean um, – you know, when is Aceto coming out here to, to, uh, to dial you in for the show? Are you just going to meet him in Las Vegas? Chris will be in Vegas the Saturday before the Olympia. And um, when do you go? Either Saturday night or early Sunday morning. I talked to I was literally on the phone in the car with him before I got here. And, um, you know, every morning I send pictures. I get the same word, like a wrecking ball. <laughs> You know, so that was pretty happy with your progress. I know he was on the radio show bragging about, you know, Sean looks really, really good. And, uh, you know, Dave got to see a, a sneak peek. He kind of filled me in a little bit uh, the other day. So you've been uh, you've been very uh, open about how you look. So obviously it's different from the past. It's a lot different, man. It's like I put in the time in and I've been beaten up quite a lot. I have a great nutritionist in Chris Aceto that there's no one like him. And, you know, he knows his shit and. You know, if he says Sean pictures every day or twice a day or three times a day, he's getting his pictures so he knows exactly where I'm at. And right now we're just focusing. We're going to focus on the next three weeks and stay in my own lane and let everybody else fuck up. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, Sean, thank you for your time, man. I know it's uh, we're going to let you get your workout on. But uh, you guys, three weeks to the Mr. Olympia contest. And for you guys tuning in, this is probably going to – I don't know when it's going to hit the channel, but – uh, you guys watch for this year's Olympia. It's going to be very, very exciting. And uh, stay tuned for the press conference and all the, the gossip leading up to it. And, uh, Sean, we wish you the best, man. And uh, congratulations Always. on your success. And uh, yes, we'll be rooting you on. I'll be sitting in the front row cheering you on. So watch for me down there. Of course. Jay, this is for you.